Happy 50th anniversary to Arts Westchester. Looking forward to 50 more wonderful years. I'd like to wish Arts Westchester a very happy 50th anniversary. It's my great pleasure to serve on the board this year. Happy birthday, Arts Westchester. We from Pelham Arts Center wish you the most successful, fantastic year. We're so excited at what you're doing, uniting all these arts organizations, giving Westchester residents a fantastic opportunity to experience Manhattan-level art 10 minutes from their home. A happy anniversary to Arts Westchester for all they do, for all they have done, and we hope to be here in 50 years celebrating another great anniversary for Arts Westchester. I want to wish a happy birthday to Arts Westchester. What a wonderful way to celebrate all the fabulous activity that Arts Westchester generates for our entire community, all the economic impact, and the wonderful way it makes Westchester the special place it is to live, work, and play. And most importantly, I want to say happy 50th birthday because I'm turning 50 this year too. So happy birthday to both of us. I think 50 years is, and through all of the different cycles that we've been through, I think 50 years is very impressive and you should be very proud of yourself as an organization, as a team. And I think the team that Janet's put on the ground here with Ann and Joanne and the, and the board, and I was asking her about some of the board members. It's amazing that wonderful history of board members that are still involved here, um, which serves a wonderful purpose, as well as the new board members that are on that bring new life, new ideas, new energy. But 50 years should not be taken for granted. I think in today's world where technology has allowed us to accelerate all these cycles and when you look back and you say, wow, Arts Westchester, not the Westchester Arts Council anymore, has been here for 50 years and has been successful through all of those challenges, economic and, and, um, and just from a community and all the things that have gone, I think is, is a great admiration for the original board members and some original executive directors and to yourselves as not only caretakers, but group that has honored that history and has taken it to a wonderful new level and new platform. So you should be very proud and I applaud you and all that to say is bravo, a job well done. I was very impressed and um, excited by the Arts Council's um, focus on being a grant regrant. and when I understood the emphasis of the organization I thought it was a win-win. It was a win for us at Rexon to want to be involved in the community and I thought it was um, a great opportunity to be involved in the passion of art and encouraging young artists and new artists in the county and making that part of what is every day, you know, part of the success of what we all are about. What people really want is interaction, so that's why there's the drive to a New York City or to a Brooklyn or a, a Boston where I happen to do business um, and a White Plains and I think you need that interaction so the, the people sourcing, the idea sourcing throughout the community is good. If it's just used as whitewash to get a consensus to push a development through the process, I don't think that's gonna bring the, the full benefit of what that people placing and uh, people sourcing could be. So I think it's an interesting um, practice that's just starting. And I know there's firms that are out there that are focused on doing that you know, um, full time, but I think it could be exciting to watch and see how that develops. You know, if you hear any of the great real estate developers in this country speak, guys that went downtown and did the redevelopment of the, um, the World Trade Center in the 70s, okay, the Rockefellers, and, and it was about art. They brought art in as a component to revitalize and start development in any area that they went into, and I think it's a key role. Um, it's something that at Rexon and myself personally we were passionate about, that art is a part, you know, of spaces where people mingle, travel through, it makes it, enriches it, makes it more uh, interesting, invokes curiosity, even if you're just walking through. So, you know, Grand Central Station is always amazing to me that, you know, the, the world-class artwork when you look up at that ceiling or you look at some of the, the, just the marble carvings that are in there as part of the architecture, to me is incredible. And maybe we've lost sight of that a little bit in this country and with some of our architecture but I think what you guys are focusing on it's good to hear that developers are coming back into making art and um, a piece of that architecture a piece of that people space so very very important to the overall success and in terms of you had asked me probably what my best memory the excitement for all of us myself as a board member for you Janet and for the entire organization when we first and when you first brought up that the building was available. It's interesting, I had looked at this building as a potential investment for Rex and uh, John Halpern had brought it to my attention so I was aware of the building and I think at the time you were 
in the uh, original offices, you had a purchase option decision that had to be made um, in the small residential building that you were in. And I don't know who brought it to me first, but you must have mentioned it, you know, that this was an idea you were thinking about. And we all started to really, I think, the light went on and we were all saying that would be an iconic building, regentrify and redevelop. Um, so I remember we walked through the building the first time. Um, I didn't even think we had a building committee at that time, uh, but we were on the board, to, I was on the board together. Um, and we walked through the building and it was a pretty dismal institutional bank building. And, but you um, and all of us, I think, saw a great opportunity with actually very inspiring space that would had great light and great um, ceiling height and great bones and air and potential to be um, part of the arts world and to bring the arts world, and I remember you saying this to me, we need to bring the arts world down to White Plains. And at that time, you know, I think you had gone out to many communities and were involved in the grant regrant process in many different communities, but to have it on Mamaroneck Avenue, right in the heart of downtown White Plains, would send a message to everybody as to what the significance was of art. And I think that was what drove us. But for me personally, walking through it the first time, it was incredibly exciting, beautiful building. You could picture all the wonderful things that you and your vision would do with it. Um, I remember meeting Rick, I think Andy Robel walked through with us. Um, it was a challenge. It was a dollar amount that I think anybody, when we first talked about it, it was like, mom, that'd be a big dollar amount to be involved with, with, a comp with an organization that really didn't have any balance sheet at that time. And it was the next big, big step. But I think all of us were excited about it and encouraged that we should go for it. And, and then the wheels started turning as to how we could accomplish it. And that involved you know, some great people, Rick Jones and uh, who was the other, Ken Gould was involved with that decision at that time. Um, and then I think it was at one of the galas, we all, we all always laughed that we had Chase involved at the time and, and Rick and um, Caesar Jacanian, I think was his name, who was the head of global real estate at uh, Chase and started out as a very, you know, let's just have it kind of net, not really donated, but we'll buy it, you hold the node. We had a couple of more drinks. So I think we had some cigars involved. It was a very successful fundraiser. And before we knew it, Caesar had his arm around me. My arm was around him. And Andy was staying there in Ken. And he was like, well, we could donate it. Just give us a little time. And we were all like, that might be a very good idea. And as time goes on, let's see. So it evolved really nicely from, you know, we'll do it on our own. We'll fundraise to it. And it's Chase and their team uh, became right around to the idea of this would be a great readaptive use of a historical building. And it was a great group of people that we were involved with that, you know, just looked at it and said, we can do this and pushed it forward. And it was a lot of fun to be involved with. Quite honestly, I've been on a lot of boards. And for me, that was one of the more exciting uh, boards to be involved with in organizations and to have that opportunity to put this footprint here and thumbprint on it as a board member was thrilling and I enjoyed every bit of it and I think we all worked together really well to to solve the problems figure out the space look at the financing cajole or maybe convince whichever word you'd like to use chase to give us the building and um, and it was exciting it worked out great so. the purchase price um, was a million two chase wasn't using the building anymore uh, and they were looking to sell it. I don't remember who was brokering it, but it was around a million two, which was a significant number for the Arts Council uh, at that time and probably still is today. It was a great um, opportunity. I remember they were marketing it to hotels. We were kind of worried that we were going to have to compete with Marriott or whomever was also looking at it. Um, we ended up uh, with Rick Jones, who was key, you know, and is a great supporter of the arts, as was Chase, to work out with them that we would do a loan. I think in initially there was a loan on the balance sheet, so we actually closed on the building with it fully financed by Chase. Uh, and then went on a fundraising campaign to really look at the, um, the whole renovation and reposition of the building, which we were all of big mindset that, you know, this asset and putting this on the balance sheet of the Arts Council would really help significantly take the Arts Council um, fundraising to the next level because we were all of the opinion that um, there's nothing better than capital campaign and bricks and mortar to get your investor and contributor base energized and excited about the vision of what the building could be and and having the a, such a strong presence of the arts right here in White Plains. So we went right into architecture and um, 
coming up with you know an improvement plan for the building and a capital campaign and Janet reminded me that I probably underestimated the capital expenditures needed by tenfold, but that's okay. It was, it was, nobody would have gone along if we put a $10 million number out, nobody would have gone along with it. So we figured a couple million dollars would fix the building up. And I think under Janet's leadership, it's gone tenfold of that. So yeah, it may have cost more, but boy, the facilities and what accomplished with it architecturally, spatially and what it's done for the arts in, in throughout the county in terms of really energizing it and putting arts first and foremost in White Plains I think has been uh, invaluable. You know we all envisioned the lobby being this dynamic incredibly energized space and it certainly is and to me it just was perfect for different venues of art where there'd be large pieces, small exhibits, um, it's just a gorgeous space and that to me was the most important transition of the building. Um, you know, I love what's gone on in the upper portion of the building and I think it's done, it's a great study of a readaptive use of an old institutional building with a lot of history and some great architecture. But to me that lobby, seeing that that night energized with a tremendous um, range of artists that were there and involved from there was I remember an exhibit in the safe itself and then there was exhibits in the other ante rooms as well as in the main hall and the lighting was spectacular and that, that glass balcony I think was unbelievable and going the rooms that you opened up behind that balcony above the safe on the mezzanine I think were just spectacular. So to me I think the building is exceptional and I think what you guys have done in redeveloping it and the, um, the use that it has is unbelievable from the office bases and I kind of just went through when I came in to do this visit and walked through some of the floors so the range of um, tenants that are now in the building I think is impressive and it goes to show what a great purpose it served in the downtown. I think strategically going forward you're on the right path. To me it's about filling voids that are that are happening. Um, so when I hear about education, to me that would be the biggest area. It was one area that attracted me when I first got involved with Arts Westchester was the idea that you were in the schools. I think one of the you know moments I always remember was there was a school in Tarrytown where you had a whole program going on around the history of Tarrytown and, and murals and artwork and I loved it. I thought it was so impactful on the children and a great spot and I think the void today in an area where you can um, really have an impact going forward would be to continue your focus on education. And I think some of the areas that you've discussed, but more what were always important to me is art needs to be out in amongst people and in spaces where they can see it and enjoy it, whether that's an office building, a retail, a, a, a fountain, a piece of art. To me, that people should see art every day and walk amongst art. It makes you think, it makes you reflect. Uh, it makes space seem more dimensional and uh, impactful to the people that pass through, even if they're going 90 miles an hour or looking down on their, their iPhone, they may look up for a moment and say, wow, that's a pretty cool piece of art, or that's really nice, and that looks excellent there. So I think those areas, and I think for me, I, and I don't know finds but I just think it's about financial stability. At the end of the day, you have a 50-year wonderful history. You need to protect that, and in the sense of develop the best funding and balance sheet that you can to make sure that this stays around for another 50 years. And I think those times will only get more challenging. Uh, and I think that the best thing you can do is continue to leverage this great asset you have in the downtown in terms of using it for fundraising and using it to make your point and impact. And that should quantify into good financial health for the Arts Council. So I remember the days when the budget and Janet and I were just talking about it where we used to traipse down to Andy Spano and sit down with him usually around three o'clock when it was hot in his office and sunny and he turned the AC off and and made it as uncomfortable as he could for us there but then I'm <laughs> joking uh, but and beg for our seven hundred thousand dollar contribution and quibble over is it administration you remember that Janet you know what line item should it belong to okay and I just heard the number is a million two or whatever or a million nine and I think that's incredibly impressive more importantly I heard great creative ideas out of Janet as to how she continues to mine ongoing fundraising for important initiatives that um, will only go on to enhance the life the culture and the um, and the, the community of Westchester County so to me, it's about get that financial stability, stay on the path of education and getting art out. Don't lose your focus as to what you're about. Getting art out and amongst people, helping young artists, and, and uh, continuing a great, great, great track record that you've had.